What's going on everyone? We are out here on Lake Erie. Day three, didn't really bother shooting too much of a video the last couple of days. It's pretty tough. Um, kind of getting into some fish this morning here. So we're gonna try to see what we can get for a shot. And try to get this video done, but it has been an interesting day. Christine is cranking one up. Felt like a bigger fish, we'll see. Oh yeah, there's a nice fish. Got some weight to it. So, like I said, we are out here on Lake Erie. It is not calm. I don't know how much you're gonna be able to see of this, but the aircraft's doing just fine in this stuff. It's right at home. But uh, we're starting to get a program put together, so we're gonna get this video shot, tell you exactly what we're doing, and we'll see you soon. Christine with a nice one. after that last fish there. Another one on a P10. So the last couple of days we've tried just about everything we can think of here. We've tried fishing shallow, we've tried fishing deep, we've rotated through every single color that we own um, and we just could not get a consistent program put together at all. So we totally made a big move, went way east. We're out we're currently off of Huron waters. Nice fish. And uh, we just basically just tweaked our program just a little bit. We moved everything up shallower. We've been chasing all these fish that were marking down 25 to 32 feet of water um, and depth wise. And we periodically were marking a fish here and a fish there up at 15 to 17 feet. And we, that, that, was the, that was the key for us for the day so far is just everything up a little bit shallower. This one here came on a P10 with a snap weight. Let's see that fish, Corey. Nice. Um, what was your distance back on this one? 50? Uh, this one be 50. So 25 feet out, two ounce snap weight, and then a total of 50 feet. So another uh, 25 feet out after the snap weight there. And that one's gone a couple of times. Um, a total of 40, 25, then 15 feet on a snap weight is gone. Bandits, mono up high. 65 and 80 back have have gone now so um it's definitely choppier today which helps bring them fish up higher too and you know should activate those fish that are up a little bit higher water's a little bit warmer here 33 we have seen 34 and a half so far up here um we're two miles out of straight out of here on pretty much out on the Huron dumping grounds is where we're at right now so we get a couple rods reset here and get back and see what we see got rods reset I changed two things on my side maybe I'm at to start asking my wife here for some pro tips I guess she's got them perfect tens pretty well dialed in here we got another nice fish sucked the board down hard now how far back was that one honey okay so 25 feet out and then 35 feet more after the two ounce snap weight so a total of 60 pretty darn well for her. I'm going to have to match everything on my side. So the way we started targeting these fish is we just kind of set things up staggered. 25 is the only consistent thing that we kept between the rods and then the snap weight and then went a total of 40, a total of 50, and a total of 60. And then we have a couple lead cores stuck out there as well. But those have been dead this entire time.
for the net. Here she comes. Walleye Master Corey out here with us today. Nice fish. that one come on that other okay green 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 it's gotta be on a mile side board here Corey that thing's a mile back there yep there we go no we'll let that one go let's see it here nice fish Corey's hooked up here. Nice. All right. So Corey's hooked up on a mono board. I dropped mine back, 120 back on the mono on that one there. So that's down a little bit deeper. Should be in that right about 20 foot range. With the last two fish of hers coming at that 50 and the 60 back, I wanted to drop this drop one of my bandits down a little bit deeper. Definitely liking this Troll Smarter device. Remote controlled um, for your speed on your kicker. It's pretty handy. Pretty handy tool. This fish looks, looks like he wants to cause all kinds of problems coming straight across. Yep, you got another one on there, Christine, outside board. There we go. That, that, there, that's what we're looking for. Christine's hooked up, Corey's hooked up. I just put one back. This feels a little bit more like Erie. Of course, it's got to be our last day, right? <laughs> yeah, that's just the way it's going to work. Yep. Yeah, it's on that one color, one color left core of the P10. Nice. Is he? You're saying I should get the net? <laughs> I don't know what you're trying to tell me. Definitely always fun doing this when it's rough out. Just raise them up.
next one here. Leader. fish back in the water here, get, that out, get a couple pictures taken, and then we'll be back. I'm going to talk a little bit about what we're using out here for gear and equipment. Alrighty, we'll be back guys. Corey's got one on here. Another one for Team Bandit. So this one was back 80. So that should be down 16, I think. The wind definitely kicked up a little bit, all of a sudden it seems like. Still out here, we've just been kind of just trolling off in the middle of nowhere. Let me show you the map here quick while well, he's fighting this fish. But so we started, we graphed in and around here. We marked fish, we shut down, we trolled across, caught a couple, but then the wind really started picking up, making it not easy for us to turn around. And we just kept slowly picking away at fish until we had a little dead spot in here. And then we decided to change direction, see what kind of happened. And we just got out here into this 40 feet and it's been much steadier. Um, same thing, I mean, it's just been the monos and the, and the snap weights with the P10s and the bandits, but uh, definitely, definitely no shortage of fish marks here. If I scroll back through time on this, if I can do it without being goofy. Just arcs and arcs arcs. Plenty of fish marking. Oh. Wife lady with the net. Dogging you hard or? No giants though today. What do you say, probably 24, 25 average? down there right now. I wish we could get some of them deeper fish to go. It's definitely been a lot tougher trying to get them deep, deep fish, 30 plus feet to go. And typically what I've always found is those are your bigger, your bigger fish, that's for sure. Just don't go swimming. Nice fish. That's a bigger one, huh? Yeah, just barely hooked too. It's a nice fish. Let's 
get another one here. Show him to the camera. Show her to the camera. Nice fish. <laughs> chunky. Not huge in length, but just chunky fish. back swimming. Why has he got a bite right when it starts raining? It's like I put my jacket on. Oh, we are hooked up on a good one here, hopefully. I switched up a couple of things, tried to target some of those fish that were down in that 25 to 30 feet of water and finally got one to trigger here. Just got that done, was gonna put my jacket on and heard the drag start clicking. Outside board, Christine side, fish. Snap weight, honey. Doubled up. Fifty five feet for me yet. I'm gonna try to bring them to your side, okay? Yeah. Hit the camera on the net. 4 All right. Yes. I was waiting for that one. That's why I set that thing down there, man. I told you them bigger fish are down deep. There's a chunky chunky monkey. Nice. All right, let me uh Unwrap that line here. Corey, how far are you out? <sighs> Look at the girth on you? that girl. No. Alrighty. Sweet. All right, let's just get this thing in the live wall quick. That way we can get it back safely here. Get and handle Corey's fish. Oh, grab the net out of here. That, honey? Yeah. All right. Well, I don't know how much you can tell, but the wind just picked up at least, probably almost double. I'd say another 10 to 15 mile an hour for sure. 
and we are about six miles offshore so we're gonna pull rods and we're gonna run in and we're gonna do some shorter trolls so that we don't wind up getting trapped out here in this in this nasty stuff so we'll be back hopefully we find some more fish we just got some really nice fish here we'll uh we'll put up a couple of pictures and uh yeah hopefully we can dial in a bite a little bit closer to shore and a little bit calmer water we'll be back guys so now we are back home from Lake Erie and I was reviewing some of the video to get this video put together and I noticed the outro clip that I had shot didn't record any audio so basically I just kind of want to touch base on what we were doing there the last day of Erie we were um, trolling around out in 40 to 45 feet of water we had found a little bit warmer water out there and we finally got a good program put together running p10s and bandits with two ounce offshore snap weights um, it was 25 back and then 25 after a snap weight as well. So we were going 25, then a two ounce snap weight, then 25 back, 30 back, 35, and then so on until we kind of dialed in where the fish were biting. And once we figured it out, it was between uh, 25 back after the snap weight to 35 back after the snap weight with both P10s and bandits. And I'll kind of go over some of the colors here we were using. Um, they're, you know, Lake Erie loves crazy colors. So some of these guys here, this one here was really hot in a P10 as well. This one was doing good on bandits. Um, you know, one thing to touch base on if you guys are looking to come out here to Lake Erie is you've got to make sure you have good equipment. Um, the rods that we're using are Daiwa RG trolling rods with Lexa 300 line counters. These things have got a really powerful drag on them, up to 22 pounds of drag. Smooth drag, it's awesome for fighting these bigger Lake Erie walleyes. Speaking of which, this one here is uh, one that we were catching fish on. Um, these rods are awesome. They're a medium, medium heavy action, seven foot six telescopic rod. They're great, they're the RG walleye trolling rods. And you know, they're just, it's nice. These reels fit in my rod locker a heck of a lot easier than the bigger bulkier reels. Good smooth drag on them, they hold plenty of line. And uh, you know, it's just, it's you wanna make sure that you're fishing with decent equipment out here. These fish are big. The weather's terrible. It was really rough, really, really, really rough. Um, and just having good equipment is always a benefit. So the last two years now, we've been running these gator back board or these gator bait boards. Um, really like them a lot. Uh, they pull very well in really rough conditions. We had six to seven footers out there um, at the buoy. So I mean, it was it was pretty ugly really have become a big fan of these boards for the price point and for the quality and plus the the owner stands behind them very well uh, we had one clip fall apart on me and he sent me new ones right away to replace everything very good guy to work with so but anyways i just want to give a thanks for watching the rest of the video here and uh if you, if you like the video give it a like give it a subscribe and we'll have a lot more content coming up here as the ice is just starting to break out of green bay so we'll see you in the next one